Kansas State head football coach Chris Kleiman with us. Paul Catalina, David Smoke on Sikkim 365 Radio. Isn't this just good to be back and in, in out in front of people again? Absolutely. I'm so tired of doing uh, Zoom uh, meetings. They were great for a while, but uh, it's great to be able to, you know, see faces and, and get around and, and be out in the public. You obviously didn't face some of the challenges that, like, maybe a first-year head coach had, had to face because you had some, some, some lead time. But with Zoom and having to build chemistry in a team, how hard was that once you finally saw everybody in person to just try to turn that? switch oh it was really difficult uh and zoom is is a great tool but it's not a great tool in my mind to have team meetings if you're gonna have a position meeting i can see everybody's face and uh know if if a kid's engaged or not in a team meeting i think it's really hard uh to to be able to do that and so then to be able to get the guys back it was still so off and on for us the entire fall that uh it didn't finally normalize for us top, probably until we came back first of February because we even had a long Christmas break. Our school didn't start till like the 27th or 28th of January. So February 1 is finally when it started to get back to normal for us. Last year, uh, can you even try to put into words what it was like? Because, you know, like Coach Aranda first year didn't have spring drills. He's doing the same thing. Two and seven. You guys were four and I think six. Mm -hmm. it, can you try to put into words how difficult it was? No, I can't. I really can't. It's uh, because every week was uh, was something new. The one thing that football coaches always can trust is their routine, and there was no routine. And then that routine would get interrupted, or all of a sudden, you know, to see the mental health issue. And I and and I have always believed in mental health, but then I saw it firsthand when we'd be out at the practice field and you'd see trainers come and tap two guys on the shoulder and they'd walk off and then you saw four guys just kind of like slump their shoulders and like, guys they're, they're, they'll be okay. No, coach, I had dinner with him last night. I'm next. Oh. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's the thing that uh, I, I saw all the time and uh, it was uh, something that um, we're all going to learn and grow from. Uh, I, I think the way we do things can be more efficient as coaches, and we're always trying to, uh, you know, out our people and stuff. We can be more efficient, but uh, no, something that uh, you can't explain. You, you hope never happens again. You mentioned growing from. Uh, I bet in this, if you took a survey of players and coaches around the country, kids have probably never been more excited to actually just practice. I think you're right. You know, we had a pretty normal spring this year, although our meetings were still in mask and we were an early spring ball. Um, but as I see summer conditioning going on, and that's as normal as it can be, we finally lifted mass mandates, I think, around 1st of June in Manhattan, so we were late. But seeing all of our people now uh, go through a normal process, seeing guys come up to the office and things, I, I know everybody's excited about a typical normal fall camp come early August. You were 8-5 and five your first year. Everyone knows what you did at North Dakota State. Has it taken an adjustment? Is it an adjustment? to how dominant you were there to learning the curve here at Kansas State? Uh, what, what happened at North Dakota State to win seven national championships in eight years and then eight in nine because they they won it the first year I left. That just doesn't happen in college. Well, I know how blessed I was. I mean, I think that in the time there, was, I was an assistant and as, as a head coach, we were 112 and eight with seven national championships. I mean, come on, that, that just doesn't, it, you can't fathom that. So, yeah, it is a, a huge adjustment, but it's a new adjustment. And, and um, the fact that we're not always going to be favored in games. We're not always the number one place that a recruit that's a power five is thinking of, of Kansas State first. We have to win that kid over. We're at North Dakota State. If he was an FCS kid, that's where he was going if he was that level of player. But uh, um, I, we've adjusted. Um, we've had to adjust some of the things just due to our league as well, uh, not only how talented the league is but uh, just how we do things offensively and defensively how we do things strength and conditioning wise I think it's a, you're always evolving you're always learning as a head coach and I learn more about myself and about our program and, and how to do things maybe adjust things differently everybody wants to say no this is the only way we do things well you better had to adjust adjusted last year you were not going to be able to keep up and I, I learned so much about myself last year 
your team, you know, obviously been through it. Most teams are now going to have more, maybe more of a veteran slant because of the extra year and everything uh, added on. But do you feel that everything you went through and all of that last year with you had some massive injuries, especially a quarterback and you had to, to deal with is going to be allow you maybe to hit the ground running this year because you have some veteran guys who've been through it? Yeah, the fact that we had a normal spring ball mm-hmm. as well. We had a really good 2019 and we were you know, our first year and we were really excited about getting into 2020. The big issue we had getting into 2020 was we lost five senior offensive linemen and we didn't know who was going to be in the offensive line. Well, we got to mid-August and we hadn't practiced yet and we're still trying to figure out who's going to be in the offensive line. That now is a position of strength for us. All those kids came back. We played nine guys in and out because of COVID and stuff, but now all those kids are are a year experienced and better and then you take the quarterback position. We had to play a 17-year-old true freshman that came in early as a as a January enrollee saying I'm gonna get to spring ball misses all that I'm just gonna sit behind Skyler and learn for a year all of a sudden game three he's thrust into a, into a role at 17 years old and the kid's a true freshman again and he started eight games and he's gonna compete in, and help a, a fifth six year senior so it's probably a position of strength for us as well is there a position group that is more affected by practice time than the offensive line no offensive line and secondary and I'm a DB guy so the communication is is the other part that's so critical but offensive line would be first and secondary would be second when you took over is there I mean there's probably not like sometimes places need a culture change Kansas State they had Bill Snyder before you yep. was that maybe as taking over head coach maybe one of the easier head culture changes you're going to see because no you don't need a culture change you just guys know how to how to work well they do know how to work but I think we've had to reset everything after COVID. Yeah. I think every school has had to reset everything after COVID. Even the teams that really did a nice job of navigating it, I still think everybody had to reset their visions, reset their goals, reset their culture. Bottom, you had to. And um, I- I'm excited because in our third year, I feel like it's all fresh right now. And part of that was because we were so you know, turbulent in, in 2020 that it's, it's fresh, it's new. We have a new strength staff, excited about that. Our guys are really working hard, and and it feels like it's our first year again. So here we are here. I mentioned this at the start. We're here breathing inside in front of people. Um, Have you ever had more anticipation for a year because of what last year was like or because last year was so completely different? Yeah, and not only that, what what is so ironic for me is – this is where we're going to be where we're going to be breathing in game one that's right yeah i mean we open up here against stanford on september 4th and i'm looking around this year 2019 my first year here kenny was just trying to push me to different places i don't know if i i don't know what i was doing now i'm looking around going okay where's our locker room going to be okay where's the where the fans going to be which sideline we're i'm trying to take things in more because this is where we're going to open up and uh uh, no, there's so much excitement because of that. You know, a lot of times you, you play a, uh, a group of five or an FCS. No, we're playing Stanford in AT&T Stadium on September 4th to start this whole thing off. So there's a lot of excitement. You know, uh, Kansas State's football program uh, and where it was and what Coach Snyder did, do you embrace everything he did? Because sometimes when there's a coaching change, it's the opposite. Yeah. It, it always doesn't end well when it's like that. Yeah. Do you just embrace all of that? Yeah, you have to. Um, it's the greatest turnaround in college football history, Ever. period. Yeah. And it will it, that will live forever. And uh, it was pretty cool because I got to be a part of three opponents coming, in, coming into K-State. Uh, when I was playing at Northern Iowa twice, Twice we played at K-State, and then in 2013, my my last year's D.C. at North Coast State, we got to come to Kansas State. Everything, and, and to see how much that place has grown, it's all due to Bill. I mean, the facilities, the town, the airport, the, the community in general, uh, all the things that we have are a direct reflection of, of what uh, Coach Schneider and, and his staff had accomplished for you know decades. And, uh, no, I embrace it. It's, uh, it's awesome to be a part of. I did want to ask you about uh, Carson Wentz, who you coached at North Dakota State. He's in Indianapolis. Uh, uh, Earlier reports are he's really enjoying it. What do you think about a uh, new place for, for Carson and, and the ceiling for him? Yeah, it's going to be a home run for him there, honestly. Uh, talk to him frequently. We text back and forth an awful lot. Uh, when I was at North Dakota State, I vividly remember the Eagles coming multiple times to, to have conversations 
Jones and stuff, and Frank Reich was always always the guy that was there. You know, Doug came a couple times, but Frank was always there. And I saw that rapport, and I saw that that bond between uh, Carson and Frank. And I remember when when Frank left, and Carson's like, "Boy, this is a huge blow to us." So I know it's going to invigorate him, and uh, he's going into a pretty good football team, and so I'm excited to watch him. How much do coaches communicate with each other, and does that shut off once the season begins? Like, do you talk whether it's Dave Aranda yeah. or Neil Brown or whoever yeah. it might be? Um, we probably did more during the COVID time. It uh-huh. does shut off a little bit probably uh, once the season starts, but uh, so much respect for, for the coaches in our league. Uh, Matt Wells is a dear friend of mine. Yep. Um, I almost was his DC at Utah State uh, a long time ago. Uh, I, I've spoken with, with Gary just because of his K-State ties, and uh, everybody's been been really good. Um, and so we got a great a bunch of head coaches in our league. Deuce Vaughn. Pretty good player. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I, we, we were talking about the preseason team, and I know that, that that's just fodder for media, whatever. Yeah. Maybe an incentive. But there's no position for him when it comes to something like that. There was like a tight end, a fullback, and we know it. And that doesn't yep. mean you don't use it, but what he he's so fun to watch i mean the oklahoma game is when he exploded onto yep. the scene but how, you just you just get him the ball whenever you possibly can yes and he's electric and he's a running back and that's the first and foremost and i, I found that out last year even against tcu we T, tcu had a really good defense uh, and there were some holes that that just weren't there and he'd find a way to make great runs for three great runs for eight great yep. runs to get back to the line of scrimmage i'm like this kid's a talented running back back that uh, has gotten stronger um, he's got great vision as everybody knows uh, he's not he, you can't arm tackle the kid even though you think well he's a smaller back you can't arm tackle him he's too strong um, and he catches the ball as good as any back I've I've seen and he's a matchup problem we can line him up in the slot and put him on a safety we can line him up in the backfield and hope a linebacker you, it opens everything else up because you just can't play him one-on-one I really don't believe that Chris thank you good luck uh, it's getting through what ever was last year and and the fact that we're again i say this a lot we're out here breathing real air in front of other people thanks for your time good luck appreciate it thanks for having me guys having me guys all right that's k-state's chris clark